So hello friends, today I'm going to show you how to work with diaphragms and then as an example I took this diaphragm from a Micronicor 50mm 2.8 and then I'm going to review with you how this thing works and then uh, we're going to disassemble it, clean it and then reassemble it. So this is a diaphragm and then most diaphragms um, I will say all of them look exactly the same so you have here some aperture blades which in this case are extremely oily so they don't manage to close properly and then so that's the first thing and the most important thing of the diaphragm then here usually you have two levers that you can see here behind I still have part of the glass here and then usually I was telling you you have two levers so you have this one which is the quick one that goes to the lever in your camera to do the quick opening and close closing of the diaphragm when you're taking a photograph and then you have one which is the slow one let's let's go the slow one let's call it like that and then it is usually composed of a cam and then it will create a fixed aperture and then usually this is the one well this one is not working really well because of the, all that oil and then this one is the one that usually goes to the aperture ring on your manual lens and then when you do this you're going to set the aperture of the diaphragm so that's for the diaphragm so rather simple thing so the blades you have two blades so the fast one the slow one and then usually you have also a spring that we see here and then is the one that makes well that ensures the return of the diaphragm once the photo has been taken so just let me go to the minimal position and then to disassemble we're going to do that just now so first thing you do I like to use tweezers it's just to release the spring so this is extremely simple task and then here now you can work it back and forth manually so that's first thing to disassemble the diaphragm you remove the spring so you have active parts and then the next step on every diaphragm is a diaphragm is built like a sandwich so you have two parts or three and then in the middle you have the aperture blades so what we're going to do now in this case is to remove this screw here and then there's one here behind and then we just need to be a bit careful so put the screws aside and then here we need to be careful because you will come out so here we remove the top or the bottom it depends on the orientation you want and then here we have the remainder of the glass so we're going to put this thing aside somewhere safe and then here this is what I explained what I was explaining to you before so it, it is built like a sandwich so we have the aperture blades and then you have this part here which is connected to one of the levers we saw before that has these slots, slots here just let me take it with my hand you have these slots here and then these slots are going to just let me try to catch them again okay so you have it so they're going to guide the blades I don't have all of them okay not a big deal you see through the motion here we're guiding 
the aperture blades to open and close. So we remove this part, which is very oily. So I'm going to put it aside in this small cup. And then here you have the blades. And then the blades, you have these pins here that serve to move. And then you have a second set of pins that you can perceive here from behind. And then these, these ones here are pivot points that are going to fit into the third part of the sandwich which is in this case this big part so we're going to remove the blades usually if there is no oil they will fall automatically but in this case the, ho the oil is holding everything really 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 well so okay they all came out I put it in this cup I just put the focus again and then here we have these elements of the diaphragm and then what we're going to do now in our case is to clean it so this is extremely simple so what I'm going to do is to use some kind of solvent just to remove the oil so just let me go a bit back so I have this lighter fluid, but then uh, the other kind of things you can use are uh, yeah, barbecue gas or gasoline. Yeah, some solvent just to remove the oil. So here we go back. And then we put the solvent. And then that's it we're going to leave it work for a few minutes well the effect is actually immediate but I'm going to let it work in the meantime I'm going to stop the video and then I'm going to clean the other parts that are a bit oily as well for example here uh, yeah, you see some traces of oil and then also on the body of the lens there is also some oil but then this is not related to what I wanted to show you today so, see you in a few seconds so hello friends, I am back, I am done with the cleaning and uh, thing was extremely simple I took everything out from the lighter fluid and then what I did was to dry it with some toilet paper so this is something really really simple and then here I am back and I am ready for reassembling the diaphragm and then this is something I like to do and then this gives me an indication on how I should reassemble the diaphragm and then what I do is I take the round parts that you can see here from the diaphragm and then I put it I try to make a around with them and then this gives me a good indication on how should I put the things in the diaphragm and then that's the first thing and then here let's start putting the parts in and then you will see immediately what I mean ok, need to catch the hole and then I put the first blade and then there is the decision on how should I proceed I go in a clockwise or counterclockwise direction ok, let me tell you most, almost all the diaphragms I have seen they assembly counterclockwise I saw one uh, recently which was clockwise but then this is extremely extremely rare so then I put the second blade
and then here we reach the tricky element which is the last blade which has to pass obviously above the previous one like in a counterclockwise assembly and then it has to go below the first one so everything works okay so I'm going to do the easy part which is to put it above the rest and then here I have to do small manipulation with my tweezers just to make it pass below the first the first blade and then here normally okay not what I wanted I'm not very critical okay in time you will get really used to this okay and then here we have what we want we have the blades reassemble and then here we have to go again into position so we take the cam part and then the indication in where we have to put it we have this small thing here which is for the spring I show you in the beginning so and then I know this has for sure go to into this hole so I do this I put it in and then now I have to catch all the pins So everything is in position. I have one which is a bit away. So I get it close. I try again. And then here I have all of them which are in good position. And then if I act it manually, as you see here, I am able to operate the diaphragm. And then here now we have the let's say tricky part which is to reassemble the diaphragm and then here I take my part the top of my sandwich just let me get this a bit closer and then here I have this small lever and then I have this opening here okay this opening here so this means this is the room for this lever and then I have also the holes that I use that I descrew initially to gain access to the diaphragm. So these two here, which are slightly oval, so I can do some setting on the diaphragm position. So I do this. I am able to see. So I can look the position of the holes and then I can just simply come and re-screw this element so it holds I don't mind really yet about the precise position of it this is what we're going to do next but then we need to get a diaphragm that is assembled. So we're really close. So here we are. And then what we're going to do next is to put again the spring in position. So I take the tweezers I used in the beginning and then I hook it to the lever here that was extremely quick I was lucky I would say and then here I just need to make sure if I fully open which is this position I am fully open and then I see it's not the case so this means I have to realign a bit 
using these positions I saw it I showed to you previously so I will get this a bit loose so here you will need a bit of manipulation I would say and then you see when I rotate the screws just let me focus that now when I rotate this you can see there is something happening on the diaphragm okay so let me try this position and then here if I come again you see I am almost totally open which is what I want so I will need probably a tiny manipulation just to finish with that I keep it with my fingers this is what I'm doing now and then here when I come to this position I am fully open so and then here if I go back I can move my fast lever and then you see the diaphragm now it is working as it should so and then this is all I wanted to show you today as you can see working with diaphragms if you are really careful it's extremely simple and then what else I have to tell you go make your repairs and then enjoy your lenses thanks for watching and see you next time huh?